I got rich after realizing this. Jeff Bezos. Welcome, potential billionaire to Promond Inspiration. We're going to discover the keys to financial success in this episode. We're exploring the thoughts of a man who rose from obscurity to become the world's second richest person today. You heard correctly, Jeff Bezos is the subject of our discussion. It is said that Jeff Bezos' approach and mentality contributed to his quick ascent to billionaire status. The fundamental realization that made Bezos the richest person in the world was that success is driven by a mindset rather than just money. This success tale offers a path for individuals aspiring to achieve success in terms of personal financial ascension. Stay tuned as we unveil the pivotal realization that brought about a complete transformation today. This is a guide for your own financial ascent, not just another success story. Let us get started without any more ado. At a financial corporation in New York City, I had a really intelligent teammate, and I really liked my smart boss. I told my boss that I was going to start an online book sales company. He took me for a walk through Central Park, Listen carefully to what I have to say, and finally said, that seems like a really good idea, but for someone who didn't already have a good job, it would be an even better idea. You can follow one of three career paths, calling, professional route, or employment. Furthermore, if you can manage to live out your calling, that's significant because it means you've struck gold. Jeff Bezos stated to me when we first met 25 years ago, Dave, I'd like you to invest in my company. What do you do with your time? I'm going to open a bookstore in my garage. Okay, I'm going to put it online. Online orders are placed by customers and I ship from my garage. However, Dave, I guarantee that if you invest money in me, I will become the wealthiest person alive eventually. I will surpass $100 billion. This was not the case 25 years ago, statistically speaking. Not every nation had 100. The national debt of $100 billion did not exist. And this kid at 26 is assuring me that he will become the richest man alive simply because he has the internet and a garage. He was speaking the truth. No, but I didn't know about it and neither did he. I was laughing mocking, making jokes about him, and he was already patting himself on the back, moving at the right speed, at just the right moment. I'll produce as much as I can, as quickly as I can. As I sit there, I tell myself there's no way this is going to be a big business. Take up a hobby or interest that you are genuinely passionate about, rather than following the latest trend and passions. That being said, I had to decide whether or not to give it a try, which was a difficult choice. I never thought I would regret trying and failing. I also got a strong feeling that deciding not to try at all would follow me for the rest of my life. I'm happy that, after giving it some serious thought, I decided to follow my passion and take the less beaten route. When I was younger, I used to be an inventor in my garage. I made an automated gate closure mechanism out of cement-filled tires, a solar-powered oven. It didn't go well when I tried to trap my siblings with an umbrella and baking pan alarms. She gave me encouragement to follow my lifelong ambition of being an inventor, a military phrase that I especially love. It also says, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I have seen that in every project I have ever worked on, it's the kind of thing that genuinely enables progress. In terms of difficulty and achievement, I think my recommendation would be to focus more on your decisions and hard work than your gifts. You want to make the most of the things that you are fortunate enough to have in life. You never know what kind of gifts you are going to get thus. You might be a very talented mathematician. It can be quite easy for you. That's the kind of present. But improving that maths and taking it to the next level may be really tough and labor-intensive, needing a lot of sweat. That's a choice. You really can't take pride in your gifts since they were given to you. You have to accept accountability for your actions by making the decision to put in a lot of effort and take on challenging assignments. But you can also show them your appreciation. You ought to feel happy with the choices you made. You have the power to choose the course of your life. 
Our choices, not our innate abilities, define who we are. Everyone in this room have extraordinary talent. I have so many gifts at my disposal. You can never really be proud of your gifts because they were given to you. It makes no difference if you are tall, have extraordinary math skills, are attractive or handsome, or have any other attribute. You can only be content with the choices you have made since they are a reflection of who you are and what you are choosing to do. And among the most crucial decisions that each of us must make, I know that you have the choice between leading a life of comfort and leisure and leading a life of adventure and service. Which of those achievements do you think you'll look back on with the greatest pride when you're 80? You'll be pleased that you choose to have an adventurous and altruistic life. There has never been a more favorable period to live. I mean, the number of inspirations the world supplies me with is just incredible. Furthermore, I think that a lot of people find the amount of innovation, change and possibility to be ludicrous. This is the beginning of your life, the one you design for yourself. How are you going to utilize your gifts? And what choices will you make? Will you be your own tutor or will you follow your own desires? Will you follow tradition or will you be creative? Which life are you going to pick? One of leisure or one of adventure and service? Will you wither under criticism? Or are you going to follow your convictions? Will you continue to bluff if you are shown to be wrong? Or will you offer an apology? Will you guard against having your heart rejected? When you fall in love, will you relax? Or are you going to err on the side of boldness? When times are hard, are you going to give up? Or will you not give an inch? Who will you be? A cynic. Perhaps you will become a builder. Will you have shrewdness? Will you injure others? Or will you be kind? When you figure out a way to provide people with the tools and services they need to express their creativity, you know you're onto something special. You know how lucky you are if you have a career. In the end, a lot of people find employment. If you do not enjoy what you do, you will never be an excellent worker. The most interesting persons in history, such as Mark Twain, Galileo, Newton and Jules Verne, would have wanted to be living now. We as a society will have an abundance of gifts, just as each of you who sits in front of me has a plethora of distinct gifts. What use would these gifts serve you? And will you be proud of your decisions or your gifts? As we conclude this enlightening voyage, keep this in mind. Instead of just happening to become successful, Jeff Bezos figured out the key that changed his life. The insight that changed everything and propelled him to unfathomable fortune is not the result of accident or luck. It's a deep realization that permanently changed his course. Are you prepared to learn the same secret that helped Bezos reach the pinnacle of success? You have the key right here, just waiting to be revealed. We're not just talking about riches on this channel, we're also drawing the blueprint for the next wave of millionaires, so keep watching and eating. Click the notification bell, subscribe, and come along on the exciting journey to financial mastery with us. Your financial success is waiting for you. Don't pass up this opportunity to succeed.